Friends who join Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we another exciting episode for you. Coming out from my beautiful backyard garden in the springtime. Lots of plants are growing and I have so much food. It's totally incredible and insane. Anyways, this is an important episode for you guys out there that are watching this, you know, and I'm glad you guys are watching this. Whether you're a raw vegan, vegan, whole food, plant based, or just eat a standard American diet, these are tips you will want to listen to so you can enhance your microbiome and have a healthier gut microbiome or gut buddies gut bacteria these are so critical for our health and our lives and our immune systems according to some of the science now the first thing disclaimer i'm gonna give you guys is i'm not a doctor i'm not a microbiome researcher or none of this stuff although i have listened to many different microbiome talks and i have been eating a raw foods diet now for 27 years and been gardening for many years and i know how soil microbial systems work I know a little bit about how we work and so a lot of this video is based on actual science that I have looked up. Of course some of these suggestions and tips I'll be giving you guys are from what I believe and I think in most cases all these tips if you implemented them they could only benefit your health whether it's going to benefit your microbiome or other aspects of your health. Now the other thing I will say is that when I first got into raw foods the microbiome was not even discovered yet. right? And a lot of raw food diet systems, ways of eating, basically did not include the microbiome in that eating system, right? And there's new information now based on the science that we should adjust our raw foods diets if you want to eat for your microbiome. There have been some videos that some raw food has put out that raw food is the best diet for the microbiome. Well, on some levels, yes, but on some levels, no because a raw foods diet can be a very restrictive diet, which is good because you're restricting processed foods, which are not good for your microbiome. You're also restricting animal foods, which are not good for your microbiome. But you're also restricting a lot of different foods that have been heat processed that will allow you to eat a, a greater diversity of plant foods, all right? So pros and cons to every style diet. I want you guys to find the style of diet that works best for you that's gonna meet your goals and your needs and your long-term health goals. So anyways, let's get right into the video. I have 20 tips I want you guys to implement so you guys could have a healthier, more robust, diverse microbiome. I personally believe that things like SIBO and other bowel ailments are probably caused by improper microbiome and an unhealthy microbiome. That being said, microbiome has been barely researched. There's not a lot of information on it. They don't really know a lot about it yet, but I'm thinking, you know, the greater diversity of the species of microbes in your gut that are beneficial, I think the more resilient you will be because I've actually seen that happen in the garden. All right, so the first five tips are basically basic health tips that are gonna help your microbiome, not even necessarily having to do with what you eat. So the first tip is to relax guys right de-stress relax live peacefully you guys live so high stress you know um jobs and are stressing out and yelling at your significant other all the time because you're freaked out dude relax being stressed out has been shown in studies not to be beneficial for your microbiome having high cortisol levels right you just want to be relaxed and at peace you might want to meditate or even do mindfulness practice, which is something I like to do. Number two way to better your health and microbiome is get enough sleep, guys. I know it's often said, raw food is, man, we don't need too much sleep. You know, hey, show me your sleep tracker and show me that you're going through all the cycles of sleep getting five hours, you know. I try to get as much sleep as I possibly can and get restful sleep in complete darkness. Link down below to the video I have on sleep. But yeah, getting appropriate amounts of sleep, not waking up, when you're too tired because you got to wake up by an alarm clock and go to bed when you're tired is a good plan that I like. Number three is exercise regularly. Aside from being good for your microbiome, it's good for our health as well. So you want to get exercise and more importantly, try to get exercise out in real nature, not inside a gym or inside your home. More on that in a little bit. Number four is change your personal care products, right? If you're using like antibacterial soap because you're freaked out about germs, right? Please understand that antibacterial soaps not only kill the bad microbes, which is probably a good thing, but it also kills and can mess up the good microbes, which could be a bad thing. 
So I'd encourage you guys to really pay attention to your personal care products that you're putting on and in your body that can negatively affect your microbiome. So I try to use more natural products whenever possible. That being said, even natural products can kill microbes. I mean, I have essential oils from plants, you know, can kill microbes. So it, even garlic could kill microbes. But on the other hand, it's shown that garlic can better your microbiome. And we'll be talking about more about that in a little bit. So anyways, use more natural products and try to avoid those antibacterial soaps. Instead, use probiotic rich soaps. Fifth tip that I'm gonna give you guys to better your microbiome is to avoid antibiotics. I mean, this is a no brainer. You take antibiotics, it kills the bad bugs in your body, which is a good thing in many cases, but it also can kill the good, good bugs because it kills the good and bad indiscriminately, basically. And then you gotta repopulate, start from scratch, which could have its pros and cons, but I generally would think it's a con. Also, in general, my personal goal is to try to minimize and eliminate all different medications or drugs, because in the end, drugs or toxins, unless you need certain drugs to live, of course, consult your doctor. I can't tell you guys what to do, but basically, I don't take any medical kind of drugs in my life. I simply don't need them, nor would I want to. I would try to find all the natural alternatives first, of course, consult your doctor before changing any kind of drugs that were prescribed to you. So the next set of tips are things you could do actually to your diet to improve your microbiome. So the main food tip is simply this, expand the varieties of foods you eat. Hey man, I know you guys love bananas and dates and romaine lettuce and stuff, but you know, you guys really want to try to eat a more diverse diet, you know, eat different kinds of fruits, eat some nuts, eat some sprouted grains, some sprouted legumes, eat as many different kinds of foods as you can. Have you had carob powder or carob pods lately? Right, I try to really diversify and eat a large variety of different kinds of foods. When, when's the last time you had aloe vera or chlorella or spirulina? Right, aside from these foods containing all different kinds of fibers, there's different polyphenols and other nutrients that can feed our microbiome that can be quite good. I mean, when's the last time you guys had a green banana? Oh, John, green bananas are gross, they're high in starch. Well, hey, green bananas and unripe bananas have resistant starch, which could be good for your microbiome. And I'm gonna probably have another video specifically on resistant starch and how that may be a deficient, you know, nutrient in the raw foods diet because you're really limiting your resistant starch intake. I also want you guys to eat things like seaweeds to enhance your microbiome because they have different kinds of fibers as well. And the other thing most important is break out of your routine. I know for breakfast, every morning you like your acai bowl, you like to eat your 10 bananas or your 13 mandarin oranges or your four mangoes. You need to do that every single morning. Dude, switch it up. Eat seasonally, eat locally. I have a garden, right? Whatever's in my garden in season, that's what I'm eating right then and there. And I'm always eating something different because things are going and coming in my garden. Shop at your local farmer's market, right? Always try to switch up your foods. Go to a different store, maybe an Asian market that has a lot more varieties of different fruits and vegetables that you guys can buy and consume raw. This is probably one of the most important things to enhance your microbiome. Of course, I've also enhanced my microbiome by heat processing my food that now allows me to eat a greater diversity of food than if I'm only eating raw foods alone. Now, you'll have to make up the decision if you want to do that and you think the microbiome is so important to do that. I mean, I certainly believe my microbiome is so important and I want to eat for my gut buddies, not just for me. And that's why I'm including small amounts of heat processed foods. Link down below to the video if you want to learn more about the heat processed foods I eat and more importantly, how I heat process the foods because that's a whole different topic as well. Sixth tip is to eat fermented foods. I know some camps and raw foods thinks fermented foods are rotten foods and you shouldn't eat them. I personally believe and also based on the science that fermented foods are in some cases even better than eating a, di a greater diversity of foods and eating probiotic rich foods. Things like sauerkraut, things like kimchi. If you want to get extra credit, man, eat things like the low sodium miso. Um, you could eat things like natto and tempeh. Try to get them raw and unpasteurized whenever you guys can. Even fermented juns and kombuchas. If you make it yourself, I'm not a big fan of the kombuchas you buy at the store. They probably have lots of extra residual sugar content. I, I recently drank a kombucha I made like seriously two years ago. It tasted like vinegar, but I'm still alive and it's probably good for my microbiome. Don't forget about coconut kefir and coconut yogurt and make your own nut and seed cheeses as well. It's super simple and super easy. 
and those are all in my opinion considered raw because they are a live food product not just a raw food product because they're enzymatically active due to all the bacteria and in the case of something like natto can supply your body with vitamin k2 and natto kinase that are very important nutrients that especially the K2 can be very critical for bone health. Now I want you guys to be aware of many store-bought products may have added probiotics. So basically they made the product, they sterilized it with heat processing, then they added shelf-stable probiotics, right, uh, to the product. So I want you guys, whenever possible, to make your own fermented foods. And you can check out a dude named Sandor Katz. He literally wrote the uh, fermentation encyclopedia with basically all kinds of fermented foods you guys can experiment and create yourself. Seventh tip I'm going to give you guys is I want you guys to eat in the daytime hours. It's so important, right? Try to have a shortened, reduced eating window during the daytime hours because we have circadian clocks, circadian rhythms, and also our gut buddies have circadian clocks and circadian rhythms. I'm still kind of trying to dial mine in. Number eight tip is go to the pound, go to your local animal shelter and adopt a pet. Adopt a cat, a dog, or other furry friend that you could pet and love on and kiss on quite often. It is shown in studies that having a pet will diversify and you'll get better microbes. You're like, but John, dogs are so dirty. Well, man, wash your dog every once in a while, but I love my dog that he's you know, literally in the dirt, in the ground, sniffing on stuff, and I'm kissing him on his neck, biting him on his neck, giving him love bites, and he loves it, and I love it, and I probably got some extra good microbiome gut buddies because of him, and he's got probably some of mine as well. Ninth tip is to grow a garden, guys, and make your own compost. Very important, having a garden, get your hands in the soil, will get you exposed to more microbes that can infiltrate into you and colonize in you. I also add things like compost tea. I have a batch of compost tea brewing, as well as I spray literally probiotics in my garden, as well as things like trace minerals that's gonna encourage more microbial diversity. Not only do I spray out bacteria and fungi, I also spray out even archaea into my garden so I could have you know, a greater diversity of microbes when I eat the foods that I grew myself. And also I'm in contact with these microbes on a regular basis. 10 tip is get out into nature and touch nature. You know, don't try to like not touch nature when you're in nature. Go into the forest, go for a hike, get your hands in the dirt, feel the trees, right? There's a thing called forest bathing that is shown just to be quite beneficial on many levels. And I was also say, you know, by ex getting exposed to do new different microbes that you're not normally exposed to can be beneficial as well. Tip number 11 is increase the polyphenols that you're eating in your diet. Some raw foods diets, unfortunately, can be quite low in polyphenol rich foods. Polyphenol rich foods are things like pomegranates and berries, things that are purple with purple anthocyanins, things like coffee and things like tea and things like cacao that has not been processed with alkali. These things can be very high in polyphenols and it's shown in studies that polyphenols also feed our gut buddies, our gut microbiota. So try to eat as many colorful foods as you possibly can. That's why I like to juice them so much to liberate some of these polyphenols and rich compounds into juices that I then get to drink that then my gut buddies can appreciate. Tip number 12 is eat your herbs and spices. Once again, in some raw food camps, herbs and spices are toxins in some raw food camps. that You, you worship them and they're God, right? <laughs> and so I would encourage you guys to increase your kinds of different herbs and spices in your diet. Of course, herbs and spices are plant foods, so they have different kinds of fibers, but in addition, they have also other kinds of different polyphenols and other nutrients that can feed and promote your gut buddies and most importantly is don't just put the taco seasoning in your salad dressing every night. Diversify. One time have taco seasoning, have the adobo seasoning, have the Italian seasoning, have the pizza seasoning, have the curry powder. <clears throat> you know, use different kinds of spices so you could better diversify your diet. My 13th tip is to don't wash your produce if you feel it's safe to do so. Surely in my garden many times I don't wash the produce because I know exactly what was sprayed on it. But if people are touching your produce and it, it's in the store and people are pawing through it and you don't know where their hands have been, you might want to wash it. But if you feel safe to do so, don't wash your produce. Of course, most produce items you buy that come in a package say, please wash before consumption. You know, when you wash produce, especially with chlorinated water, you can reduce the microbes on that, which could be a good thing if they're bad microbes, but you could also potentially wash away the good microbes as well. 
So that's the balance we have to live of live in an industrialized society where you're actually you're not growing your own food so you don't know who touched it or what was sprayed on it before you got it. 14 tip is buy organic produce whenever possible. If your microbiome is important to you, if the planet is important to you, buy organic produce, guys. Why do I say this? Because organic produce in general, they may spray less um, things on it like pesticides so the plant has to create its own pesticides so they may be more polyphenol rich. Also, many different pesticides or things that are sprayed on foods may kill things like fungus and bacteria because they don't want outbreaks on the crops and then you're eating those that then may negatively affect your microbiome. For example, on conventional produce, they could use Roundup on the crops. It's not going to kill the crops. It's going to be in the food. You're going to eat the food and that could disrupt your microbiome. Also, it's shown to be a cancer carcinogen. You know, there's been um, lawsuits against Monsanto where they're getting sued because people are dying of cancer because of Roundup. Right, so try to eat, try to buy organic produce whenever you can to have a healthier microbiome. 15 tip I'm gonna give you guys is take a probiotic. Now not all probiotics are created equal. There's only certain probiotics that I like and I always experiment with new ones. Some of them have a lot of research behind them and some of them have zero research behind them. I'm always kind of not confident at the health food store if I buy a probiotic. Is it really gonna be alive and active? Because it always says at the time of manufacture, you have all these CFU colony forming units, but when you get it, it might have not have been you know stored properly, might have been expired, and it might not have the probiotics that you guys are expecting. So for that reason, my favorite probiotic is Dr. O'Hara's Probiotic 10 Plus. That's actually a food state probiotic, so it's not just like this white crystalline powder. Another probiotic product I've been using lately that's actually quite spendy is a Acromantia. That's supposed to be a really foundational probiotic in our guts that's super critical for our health. I believe that one to be active. They sh ship it in like cold storage and there's a few other ones out there that I'm still playing with and researching. But yeah, um, VSL, another proven probiotic should be available at the Costco pharmacy if they still sell that there. It's got to be kept refrigerated, but that one has some proven science behind it. So be wary of probiotics, but I think taking a diversity probiotics can be helpful. 16 tip is this one's gonna be weird for a lot of you guys is take a prebiotic fiber you're like john i get so many fibers in my diet because i eat raw foods i eat, all i eat is plants plants have lots of different fibers here's the thing guys if you take a probiotic fiber supplement right i take an inulin supplement right now i could get more inulin to me because maybe you guys aren't eating inulin rich foods like yocon or drew some artichokes or even jicama all that often this allows you to get it in regularly also i take things like larch you know prebiotic fiber you know and there's lots of studies on some of these prebiotic fibers that can be beneficial for our gut buddies because once again it's a different kind of fiber than you're getting from vegetables right people say john why do you throw away the pulp from your vegetable juices because the pulp from vegetable juices are not as important of a fiber to me because I eat so many vegetables otherwise already, but I would rather get fiber from flax seeds. So I grind up flax seeds and eat them. I'd rather have some flax seed powder fiber mixed in my juices instead of just the vegetable juice fiber that I already eat plenty of vegetables in my evening soup or salad. 17 tip is take a postbiotic and or trace minerals. So I take a soil humate product, uh, you know, I think it's called a uh, gut ion um, and that's basically a soil humate product with lots of different um, trace minerals in there and it says those are signaling molecules for the microbiome i don't know if that's true or not but it sounds good to me but also there's been research on how postbiotics can also and may also help your microbiome as well 18 tip is i want you guys to process your food in different ways it's super important in my personal opinion you know if you're in the raw foods world you know, there's only certain ways you could process your food that are considered raw compliant if that is important to you. Of course, you could put things in the fridge and then eat it. That's a little bit different than eating it fresh picked from the garden. You could freeze it and then thaw it out and then eat it. See, this is breaking open cell walls and changing the structure of the food a little bit that maybe your gut buddies will like. You can vacuum blend things. You can juice things, removing some of the fiber. You could dehydrate things. This, is, this all changes the kinds of nutrients and the fibers within the foods that I personally believe may positively affect our gut microbiome. Of course, what is proven to affect our gut microbiome is heat processing certain foods like purple sweet potatoes. You want to cook your sweet potatoes. I ha happen to steam them myself and then you cool them and it changes the kind of resistant starch in there um, once you eat that. And that has been shown to be beneficial for your microbiome. 
So if you're not going to heat process your, your foods to do this, try to process your foods in different ways. My 19th tip is to travel. When you travel, you have a new environment that you're in that has different microbes. And more importantly, when I travel, I love to eat local food. So I visit farmer's markets. So not only am I getting new microbes in the environment that I'm in, but I also get new different kinds of foods that can possibly influence and affect my microbiome as well. So I want to encourage you guys to travel a little bit more to places that you don't normally go. I really want to travel to some of the blue zones in the world and eat some of the foods those people eat and maybe even do an FMT while I'm over there. My 20th and final tip for you guys today to better your microbiome on a raw foods diet is to make new friends and meet new people and, and get out and, and be a little bit more social because you'll come in contact with more people that probably have different microbiomes than you and you know hanging out I, I mean it's been shown in studies that like you and your partner could share a lot of mouth microbiome things and all these things and you know especially with your dog you're you're commingling and so i would say that just if you could get out and socialize more with people as long as it is safe to do so wherever you live and you feel safe to do so you know um, I would say do it. I think that could also be po positively affect your microbiome as well. Um, and maybe even get a new significant other. So that's it for my 20 tips to enhance your microbiome on a raw foods diet. Most of these tips you guys can do being raw compliant if you got to stay raw. But as you heard, you know, I feel that including small amounts of some heat processed foods that have been shown in studies to be beneficial for me and have other effects besides probiotic and beneficial effects on my microbiome is uh, is warranted for me personally. Of course, you guys got to do your own research and do what you want to do. But you know, for me, the area of the microbiome is super critical, super important. I mean, I got into raw foods because of immune system challenges, and the doctors told me my my immune system wasn't strong because of my genes. But I personally believe that the genes load the gun, and your environment pulls the trigger. So I've tried to dial in my environment and when I learned more about the microbiome in recent years, you know, I had to like make adjustments to my raw foods diet because it is an important part of science that once again, most raw food camps don't take into consideration. So I want you to think about it yourself and see if this microbiome thing makes sense to you. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but do your own research, look it up. Of course, what I've come up with is that this is quite important and I don't want to get left, be out, left behind by just being a raw foodist and not considering my microbiome. When I first started raw foods, once again, microbiome was not even a consideration and I probably would have just kept doing what I'm doing. But as new science comes out, I try to stay up to date with things. I'm gonna make adjustments and make course corrections so I could get my goals and my outcomes, which is living healthfully and um, you know having a nice long life where I can enjoy my time here on the planet and I hope you guys are enjoying your time as well that you spent today watching this episode and if you guys did hey please be sure to give this video a thumbs up you're not gonna hear information like this anywhere else because I'm a really outside the box raw food thinker I've been doing this for now for 27 years and most raw food is basically just repeat the rhetoric that you've heard so many times before and hey it's good to repeat rhetoric I used to do that too but I really want you guys to start thinking for yourself and see what makes sense to you do your own research and don't just follow the leader blindly right and so i'm just sharing my life with you guys in case you think it's important or valuable you guys could look into it more but at least minimally do some of the things that i've shared in this episode that you feel comfortable with i think that you'll be healthier because of it also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new upcoming episodes i've come out every five to seven days you don't know where i'll show up or what you'll be learning on my youtube channel and make sure you click the bell to get notified as my new videos come out. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are all wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time. Teach you guys all about how to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables into your diet so that you guys can eat healthier. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and enhance your microbiome.